Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today you will learn about B-mode and Doppler ultrasound of the axillary artery. The normal axillary artery has an approximate diameter between 6 and 8 millimeters, but it can still vary based on patient size. This image shows a normal axillary artery with color Doppler applied. We can see smooth blood flow within the artery. Our first pathology to learn is stenosis of the axillary artery. Stenosis is the abnormal narrowing of the artery's lumen. This can be due to many reasons. It can be due to thrombosis or due to vasculitis, an inflammation of the vessel. This can occur in cases such as giant cell arteritis or Takayasu arteritis where there is an abnormal increase in thickness of the vessel wall which can narrow the lumen. In this image we can see a narrowing of the artery lumen. This is the entire lumen of the vessel but we only see color Doppler signals in this region. This is a greater than 50% stenosis due to giant cell arteritis and at this point it is occluded. No Doppler signals are present in the lumen at this point. So this region of the vessel is occluded. Now we will look at spectral Doppler studies of the axillary artery. In the normal case, this is the waveform seen. This sharp peak is the peak systolic velocity, the PSV. Normally, it is between 50 and 100 centimeters per second. However, this can vary due to the patient's body habitus, cardiac output, and arm position. Here, the PSV is approximately 70 centimeters per second. This small tip below the baseline is a small flow reversal for a very short time during early diastole. The end diastole will be at this point. End diastolic velocity can be low or absent in the axillary artery. The acceleration time is usually less than 140 milliseconds, a rapid upstroke. In a significant stenosis, color Doppler can show mixing of colors at the stenotic site and immediately distal to it. This color mixing is not seen in normal cases. This appearance is termed a mosaic pattern and it indicates turbulence. In spectral Doppler, in severe cases of stenosis, the waveform can appear thick and has a blunt peak. This occurs from turbulent blood flow across the stenosis. This appearance is called spectral broadening. In the normal image, you can see a thin waveform with a sharp peak. But in this case, the waveform is thick and has a blunt peak. The PSV increases in stenosis. In a mild stenosis, the PSV can be 1.5 times greater than normal PSV. So if the PSV is around 150 centimeters per second, it may be due to mild stenosis. In a moderate stenosis, the PSV can be two times the normal PSV. So if a normal PSV is 80 centimeters per second in the other arm, then a PSV of around 160 to 200 centimeters per second can be seen in moderate stenosis. These are just some example scenarios I'm sharing with you. In a severe stenosis, the PSV will be three times greater than normal PSV. It is often greater than 300 centimeters per second. In this example, the PSV is 4 meters per second, which is 400 centimeters per second. Aneurysm is the abnormal focal dilatation of the axillary artery. It is rare, but it may occur due to thoracic outlet syndrome. In this image, we can see an increased diameter of the artery. A thrombus is more prone to getting attached to the arterial wall in aneurysm. When color Doppler is applied, we will see a yin-yang swirling pattern. Almost half of the aneurysm has a blue color, and the other half has a red color. 
This is the yin-yang sign seen in aneurysms. A pseudoaneurysm occurs when there is a breach in the arterial wall due to injury or surgery, which leads to a collection of blood outside the arterial wall, but it gets contained in one place by the surrounding tissues. This creates a false aneurysm. Its appearance on color Doppler is similar to a true aneurysm, but it can be differentiated based on the patient's history. A yin-yang sign is also seen here. This is the axillary artery, and this is the pseudoaneurysm. On spectral Doppler analysis of the pseudoaneurysm, we will get a to and fro flow. We get an alternating forward and reverse flow. A yin-yang sign is seen here as well. Vasculitis refers to inflammation of the blood vessel. It can occur in conditions such as Takayasu's arteritis or giant cell arteritis. Normally, the intimal wall thickness is less than one millimeter, approximately. On ultrasound, there is increased wall thickening with or without stenosis. This thick hypoechoic area is the increased wall thickening. It is slightly brighter than the lumen. The lumen is anechoic, so you will be able to see this thickening. Using color or power Doppler makes it easier to visualize these thickened walls. This thickening is often concentric and involves long segments of the artery. Axillary artery dissection occurs when there is a tear only in the innermost layer of the artery, the intimal layer. This allows blood to enter between the layers of the wall and create a false lumen. This leads to an intimal flap floating within the arterial lumen, and it appears like this. This flap can appear as a mobile linear ecogenic band in real-time imaging, creating two lumens in the artery. One is the true lumen of the vessel, and the other is a false lumen created by this flap. So this is how a dissection appears on ultrasound. Many of these pathologies that we saw regarding the axillary artery are rare. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.